Into the Spider-Verse was an absolutely great movie. And I feel like I don't really have to say it again, you probably heard it multiple times before already. It changed modern western animation and earned praise from literally everyone. All my friends loved it. All two of them. Into the Spider-Verse was awesome. But Across the Spider-Verse somehow manages to be even cooler in my opinion. The animation here is mind-blowing, seriously. The movie manages to combine so many different styles of animation together and it absolutely doesn't look like some colorful mishmash, it looks absolutely fabulous. It's like a comic book that literally came to life. People who work on animation for this movies really deserve the money that they earn. Across the Spider-Verse once again raises the bar for animation. It is with no exaggeration the best animation I have ever seen. And I watched an abundance of great animated movies. Just a couple of months ago I watched Makoto Shinkai's Suzume on the big screen. Another absolutely beautiful piece of animation. Not many people like it when movies or seasons of shows add on cliffhangers. But here it worked, I think. The movie ends on the moment when Miles, after finding himself in the wrong universe, gets captured by another version of himself who became a criminal instead of a superhero. And Gwen assembles a team of spider people not only to save Miles, but also prevent an entire spider verse from collapsing. Luckily we don't have to wait for another 5 years or so to see the next part of the trilogy. The next movie beyond the spider verse is set to be released next March, but I have this knowing feeling that they're gonna postpone it until December. If that really happens, if my prediction comes true, I'm finally packing all of my belongings, my two guitars and a cactus in a pot and moving out of my parents' apartment. Anyway, I do hope the Spider-Verse trilogy will continue changing and inspiring modern animation. I hope that in 10 years we're gonna look back at Spider-Verse the same way we look back at Toy Story now, the movie that revolutionized 3D animation. After Toy Story, all major companies started making their animated movies 3D and almost completely abandoned all other styles for at least a couple of decades. Disney tried to return to its roots with The Princess and the Frog, but that movie was not successful. For better or worse, we're still getting tons of 3D movies. In just this month, we're gonna see Elemental and Ruby Gilman, the movie that I'm personally looking forward to watching. But the current trend is obvious, animation is becoming more and more diverse and creative. First the bad guys, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, this summer we're getting a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, and later this year's Disney's Wish. Animation and live action are two different forms of media. Both have their own strength, obviously. But recently we've seen a trend of animated movies getting more and more indistinguishable from live action. This trend literally culminated last year when Pixar released Lightyear, which was a catastrophe. Boring story and absolutely boring animation that could easily be just a live action movie with Chris Evans. Nothing would change, honestly. When animation blends with live action, it obviously loses what makes animation so unique. Animation loses its charm. Like when Disney makes useless, in my opinion, live action remakes of their classical cartoons. These live action versions always lack something important, something that made the original cartoons so good in the first place. And unfortunately Disney is not the only one. It seems like DreamWorks is preparing live action How to Train Your Dragon, something that I didn't see coming, honestly. I am really glad that we're getting Spider-Verse movies. They really bring life back to western animation. They really show what animation is truly capable of when it has room to breathe. Again, the animation in Across the Spider-Verse is absolutely mind-blowing. Now let's talk about the story. The movie is about choice and emotional dilemma that Miles has to face. Do you remember the first Spider-Man movie by Sam Raimi? At the end Peter had a choice between saving Mary Jane and saving a bunch of kids. Miles has a similar choice, but on a far greater scale. He has to choose between saving his own death and risking the fate of the universe, and the entirety of Spider-Verse as well. You see, every Spider-Man in every universe has to lose someone that they love. This is an unchangeable part of being Spider-Man. Tobey Maguire Spider-Man lost his Uncle Ben, Andrew Garfield Spider-Man lost Uncle Ben too. 
and Gwen Stacy, by the way. Tom Holland's Spider-Man was Aunt May. Being Spider-Man means sacrifice. Every Spider-Man has to lose someone close. The movie can also be seen as criticism of comic books and how they are obsessed with bringing the characters back to the starting point over and over again, rebooting everything over and over again. To an extent that getting into Marvel nowadays is practically impossible mission for newcomers. I know because I tried multiple times before. Not just Marvel obviously, but DC as well. So if you change the canon you start a domino effect, which means paradoxes and potential collapse of the multiverse. Miguel, the main Spider-Man at the Spider-People headquarters just tells Miles his father is supposed to die, and Miles can't do anything about that. Of course Miles does not agree with that. Of course Miles wants to go back to his world and try to save his dad, despite the potential risk for the world. It's like liberating Spider-Man from the chains of canon and letting him decide his life choices himself. Miles has an unbelievable emotional weight on his shoulders. The fact that Miles wasn't even supposed to become a Spider-Man, the fact that he was beat by mistake makes his emotional journey even heavier. The movie doesn't really have an ending per se, at least Miles' arc does not have an ending. But if we look at this movie from Gwen's perspective, she goes from escaping from her father who was about to arrest her for the alleged murder of Peter Parker, to coming back home and reuniting with her father again. Across the Spider-Verse does a great job with characters and their story arcs. If we look at Across the Spider-Verse's Gwen's story does have a good ending, with culmination being the conversation between Gwen and her dad in their apartment. But the movie is of course not impeccable. Everything could easily be avoided if Miguel lied to Miles about his father's death. He could tell Miles that his death would die next year, for example. Miles, Gwen and the others would have been quite busy trying to catch a neutralized spot, and by the time they're done, Miles' father could have been dead already. Miles would have been furious, obvious, but it's not like Miguel actually cares about anyone's feelings. Everything could be avoided. Miguel spends years pretending to be someone else, so it's not like he's such a stranger to lying, honestly speaking. But his bluntness caused the story to happen. This is probably my biggest complaint. By and large, Across the Spider-Verse is a fantastic movie with the most amazing animation that I have ever seen so far. If you still doubt whether you should watch it, do it for Gwen Stacy. Seriously, this version of Gwen is one of my absolute favorite characters in animation. She's got an amazing character design, character arc and voice. When I heard Gwen I immediately realized her voice sounded so familiar. I looked up her voice actress and it's Haley Steinfeld. She also voiced Violet in Arcane, that's why her voice is so familiar. I have absolutely no doubts that Beyond the Spider-Verse will be great as well. Potentially the Spider-Verse is one of the best trilogies ever. And the second movie deserves 9 out of 10.